And good evening, everyone. I'd like to uh, welcome you to tonight's uh, rate study informational meeting. We want to give folks time to go ahead and get registered and get into the space. So I know a few of you are here already. Uh, we're going to give it a few more minutes, allow folks to come into the space, and then we'll go ahead and get started. So we'll be back with you in just a couple minutes. Once again, just want to welcome everybody to tonight's meeting. Uh, we had a few more pre-registrations than we have attendees right now. Uh, so if everyone will just be patient with us, we're going to go ahead and give it another minute or two before we get started. Uh, so we can give folks time to, uh, you know, kind of check in, get registered and get into the space. So again, I thank you for your patience. We'll give it just another minute or two and then we'll start our presentation for the evening. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the December 7th, 2023 rate study informational meeting uh, being hosted virtually uh, by the city of flag staff. My name is Tim Hancock. I work with Stantec and we're cooperating and working with the city on this rate study and I'll be your moderator uh, for this evening. Uh, we want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to pose questions and have your questions answered this evening. Uh, so we will be uh, having a lot of time from 7.30 p.m. until, I'm sorry, 5.30 p.m. Uh, for about 90 minutes, and we hope to get to everyone's questions. Uh, the best way to ask a question is if you're viewing this program on the WebEx platform, there's an icon in the top right corner for the Q&A panel. Just open that panel up and type in a question and hit enter or send uh, just below the question panel. So that's the easiest way, and you can ask those questions at any point during the presentation. We will complete the presentation in one run, and then we'll go to the questions that we have and do our best to address as many questions as we can this evening. So once again, just click that Q&A, uh, and that'll open up a box, and you can enter your question directly into the box and hit send. 
If you are participating by telephone, we did offer this uh, so folks who may not have access uh, necessarily to an online or virtual platform can dial in and receive the presentation in both English and Spanish. If you were uh, attending by phone, in order to ask a question, just press zero. That'll take you to a live operator. That operator will take your question and put it into the program for this evening. Also, those of you that are, are watching this virtually and able to see it, you might want to jot down those phone numbers in case you have a connection issue. You can then come back in by phone without missing a beat. So what I'd like to do now is go ahead and start the presentation uh, by turning things over to Erin. Erin's with the City of Flagstaff. She's going to get the presentation going. So, uh, Ms. Young, uh, good to see you this evening. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and turn things over to you to get started. Good to see you, Tim. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Erin Young. I am the Water Resources Manager for the City of Flagstaff and the Project Manager for this rate study. First, I would like to thank you all for attending. We hope to inform as many customers as we can prior to making any changes to our water or wastewater or reclaimed water rates. I have a couple of slides to share that outline some fundamental information about our meeting tonight before turning it over to Santec for the main presentation. First off, what is a rate study? A professional consulting firm conducts a rate study to assess the cost of providing a service or mix of services to its customers and then checks that revenues are adequate to cover the costs. In this case, the City of Flagstaff has hired Santec consultants through a contract approved by City Council in March this year to provide that service. Second, why do we conduct a rate study? A rate study and the cost of service analysis is required of any public utility as the customer protection to ensure revenue collection is proportional across the customer classes, with our policy being to conduct this analysis every three years. The last time rates were evaluated was in 2015 and 2016, and we have not had an increase since 2020. And the pandemic um, has made it dis difficult or made it difficult for us to conduct a study until now. Uh, an unprecedented rise in construction costs and supplies, fuel, for example, has resulted in water services having to compromise other budgets to meet the higher costs of doing business related uh, partially due to inflation, but also um, even wage increases, for example. Um, this rate study is very important to help bring us back to an, a, an appropriate level of investment and replacement schedule for aging uh, water and sewer mains, uh, for example. Uh, replacing aging infrastructure greatly improves water and energy efficiency, um, which is um, obviously our goal is, um, is uh, efficiency. And um, the other point with rates is, is we op actually operate as a nonprofit. We can't be uh, making uh, more money than what uh, our budgets um, require. Um, last, what fees are we talking about? On the next slide, I'm showing you uh, my municipal services bill. And if you look at your bill, you'll find a number of line items that are not related to water services and the drinking water, wastewater, and reclaimed water fees and charges being assessed with this rate study. On a typical residential bill, the fees that might uh, change are your base meter charge. This is a fixed charge based on your meter size. The number of gallons consumed every month is charged at a rate that depends on whether you are a commercial or residential customer. Residential customers are charged within a tiered structure. On my bill, I used 800 gallons in the month shown, which is under the 3,500 gallon tier one cap. So I'm charged within that tier one rate of uh, $3.44 per thousand gallons. The energy surcharge is a fee that is tied to water consumption, but it's not a fee addressed by this rate study. It changes each year based on how much water was produced from Upper Lake Mary versus groundwater from our some 25 groundwater wells. The sewer charge is based on the number of gallons you use on average during winter months. Uh, you're automatically charged that same consumption rate each month 
throughout the year. And while stormwater is part of water services, that fee was recently assessed and updated earlier this year. The other fees are not related to water services or the rate study. And you can reach out to our customer service team if you have basic questions about your bill. And now I am going to turn it over to uh, Carol Molesky with Stantec. She will go into more detail on the rate study talk through the timeline and process and how you can be involved. And then we'll open it up for question and answer. Thank you, Tim. Thanks, Aaron. And good evening, everyone. As Aaron mentioned, my name is Carol Molesky and I'm a senior principal with Stantec. I'm leading the rate study here that we're working on with the city. Just a little bit of background about me for the past 26 years or so, I've specialized in financial planning, rate studies, and other services for water and wastewater utilities. I started my career in Denver and worked throughout the West, and now I'm located in the Midwest, and I still work in the West. I'm thrilled to be working with the city on this rate study. For the next few minutes, I'll be going over more details about a rate study and what's involved. I'll cover the basic requirements of a rate study, and then I'll talk a little bit about how the study might impact the rates that you pay for water, wastewater, and reclaimed water services. Stantec began working with the city on this rate study in May of this year. The entire study is planned to continue throughout the beginning of 2024 through September. So our target is to finish the seven tasks that you see on your slide for over the next few months. So the next nine remaining months. For those of you on the phone, I'm showing a graphic that covers seven tasks. The first task starts out with the study orientation, which I mentioned is in May. Then we go through a financial planning phase, a cost of service analysis, rate design, a rate model, and reporting with ending with presentations and recommended rates. The green arrow on the slide points to where we are currently at the cost of service analysis. Through the rate study process, we answer three basic questions for each type of service for water service, wastewater service, and reclaimed water service. These three questions are, how much revenue needs to be recovered each year from rates? Second question is, from whom do the rates need to be recovered? And then third, how do we collect these revenues? The rate study process goes through all of these steps in order to make sure that the amount of revenue that's recovered from rates is sufficient and stable over time. We make sure that the utilities can still recover certain targets, financial policies, and reserves. We also make sure that the operations of the water, wastewater, and reclaim systems can be sustainably funded over time. When we're looking at the cost allocation methods, we want to make sure that we appropriately allocate costs across the different functions of the utility system. We're following concepts provided by the American Water Works Association and the Water Environment Federation. Those are the two industry, um, industry organizations that provide guidance on how to do this. We don't make this up. We follow the guidance in order to maintain proportional and fair rates within classes and between different customer classes. We make sure that we are determining the correct and appropriate costs of service for each class through this process. And then finally, we determine, we determine the rates that are used to calculate your water and sewer bills through that last component. We are aiming for simple, equitable, or proportional rates and sustainable rates over time. When we do that, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, we're balancing a lot of objectives. We also want to make sure that we address any costs that aren't recovered through rates. So not all the revenues that the utility collects are rate revenues, and we'll go over that. That approach is part of the whole cost of service and rate design process.
Our rate study today is directed by policy strategies that are based on input from the city council and the water commissioners and other interested stakeholders. These policy strategies were provided to us when we were looking at how to conduct this rate study. There are four strategies that I'm identifying here on this slide. The first strategy is to implement water and wastewater rates and charges that are legal, proportional, and equitable through a cost of service study. That's exactly why we're here. Strategy two is to develop a long range financing plan that sets forth the long term funding needs of water services. This is the fundamental task and the fundamental strategy of a rate study. Strategy three is to establish fees that cover the cost of service, ensuring the utility meets regulatory requirements. This is an indication that there are many objectives and requirements that the city needs to meet when designing rates. And strategy four is to discuss forward thinking or new opportunities for how rates and pricing strategies can help achieve the goals of the utility or city. Through this rate process, we are going to look and think beyond the box. You know, we're going to look at other opportunities for adjusting rates if necessary. Each strategy that I've just discussed relates to each one of the technical tasks of the rate study I just mentioned a few minutes ago. We will continue to refer to these strategies as we go through the study. A rate study involves many tasks. A lot of it is technical analysis. A lot of it is discussion. And we have regular meetings and discussions with the city as we go through these technical tasks. We can summarize what's included in a rate study through this graphic that shows four basic um, elements. The first one is the revenue requirements that I mentioned. Second is cost allocation. Third is other fees and charges. And fourth is rate design. This is all supported by stakeholder participation, which means you. So as we go through each of these components, I'm gonna talk a little bit in more detail about what's involved. We start with the revenue requirements that add up to the annual amount of revenue and the annual, annual amount of costs that water services incurs each year to run the utilities. As mentioned previously, the rate study is focused on water, wastewater, and reclaimed water. So we're just going to talk about that for the next few minutes. The revenue requirements are made up of operating costs. So these are the day-to-day -day costs that the city incurs to provide water and wastewater services. It also includes something we call capital costs. Capital costs include debt service payments on any borrowed funds that the city has made in order to build improvements in the system. It also includes any capital projects or capital improvement projects, such as pipes and pumps and treatment plants that cost money. So that's part of the revenue requirements. And then finally, we have some financial policies that need to be met based on the cities and water services established policies. And these are debt service coverage ratios and reserves. So additional requirements that we need to factor into the revenue. The second step is cost allocation. This is the step that reviews how costs are incurred within the systems, so within the water systems, wastewater and reclaimed, and assigns, I like to call it, assigns costs into different buckets. So these buckets are evaluated and these costs are evaluated with the city so that we could summarize how costs are incurred. Then we can translate that into how each customer class or residential, commercial, Etc. how each customer class uses the system and is assigned those costs. So we use monthly billing data to determine how much each customer class uses each month. So we look at water usage, we look at wastewater usage, and we use those trends and those amounts of water use in order to allocate costs to customer classes in this step. Water and sewer rates aren't the only types of fees and revenues that the city collects to run your utilities. We have a charge called capacity fees. These are fees, one-time fees, charged to new connections to the system. 
This fee is used to pay for the growth related costs of the system. You might have heard the term growth pays for the costs of growth. So that's the concept behind capacity fees. We also have miscellaneous fees. These are other fees that are charged to customers for services the city provides that aren't directly related to using, using water, but it could be things like late fees, permit fees, or even the septic waste hauler fees. We're looking at these during the study to make sure that they're set appropriately and recovering the right amount of cost. Finally, we use the information that we've gathered, so the annual amount of revenues needed, the allocation of revenues across customer classes, adjusted for those fees and charges that I just mentioned, and then we calculate your monthly rates. This step is ultimately what we use for those bills that you receive. So the elements, the components that Erin highlighted on her bill are those rates and components that we calculate. Part of this task is also to review any, if any changes that we're suggesting have an impact on your monthly bill. We will look at impacts across the different customers, and that will help inform the uh, Water Commission and the City Council when they make their decisions on the final rates. I had mentioned several times that Rates aren't the only sources of revenues that the city has to pay for operations and related utility costs. I'm showing a balancing graphic. We're balancing the uses of funds that the city incurs to operate its water and wastewater reclaim systems with the sources of revenues or the sources of funds. On the uses of funds or cost side, we have what I've mentioned before, operating and maintenance expenses, annual debt service payments, any reserve requirements, and, and costs for capital improvements. These are projects that are renewing and replacing the existing system to better serve you, any upgrades, and also any expansions for new customers. All of these costs are balanced by different revenue sources, and we need to align those revenue sources in this study. Primarily, rate revenues are the main source of the funds that the city has available but there are also those miscellaneous fees, capacity fees, and reserves. So the money that is in the bank is can be used also. So it's all balanced out for uh, sustainable operations. Slides, I'm going to talk about the current rates that you pay for water and wastewater services. Erin showed us an example of her bill but the schedule that I'm showing now is available on the city's website, and it starts with the water portion of your bill. The water portion of your bill has two components, as Sarah, as Aaron mentioned. The base charge or monthly fixed charge is that charge that doesn't vary based on the amount of water that you use, and it's based on your water meter size. So if you're a typical residential customer with a three quarter inch water meter, and you're inside the city, you're going to be paying $6.64 every month. The second component does vary based on the amount of water you use. For single family residential customers, we call this tiered rate structure an inclining block structure. That means that as you use more water, you pay an incrementally higher price for that water. So as the example Erin gave, she was using less than that first tier threshold of 3,500 gallons so her usage is billed at $3.70, excuse me, $3.44 per thousand gallons. So that is a, anything up to 3,500 gallons is charged $3.44 per thousand. Say you used an extra 1,000 gallons the next month, then you'd pay that $3.44 for the first 3,500 gallons. But for that extra 1,000 gallons, you'd pay the next tier rate of $4.45. We have other rates for non-residential customers as well, and that is based on their usage characteristics, and they pay a water rate per 1,000 gallons as well. The next slide shows the sewer rate schedule and the reclaimed water rate schedule. 
Sewer rates are a little different than water rates. They are only based on water used in the winter and on a volume basis. So there's no fixed charge that's assessed right now to the sewer rates. But the water that you use in the winter is a proxy for water that gets returned to the wastewater system and treated at the wastewater treatment plant. That's why we use the winter average of December, January, February, and March. So your winter average gets calculated and then you pay that same rate per thousand gallons every month for the year until your winter average gets recalculated. Non-residential customers are a little bit different. They pay a different rate per thousand that reflects not only the volume of their usage, but also the strength of their wastewater flow, meaning any, um, any waste constituents that are in their wastewater gets accounted for within their rate. The reclaimed water is a set up very similarly to water. This is only for reclaimed service and residential customers that have a reclaimed connection at pay a tiered rate structure. The non-residential customers also pay a rate per thousand gallons for that reclaimed water usage. When we review the rates and fees in this rate study, we balance many objectives. For example, it is important for water services to collect sufficient revenues in order to provide you with consistent and reliable service. At the same time, having a stable forecast for the water and sewer bills you pay so that you can budget appropriately is equally important. We also want to make sure that the amount of bill that or the bill that you receive is a good indication of how much water you're using so that you could adjust your usage if needed in order to affect your bill. So all of these factors work together when we're looking at alternative rate structures. We consider all of these objectives when we're developing alternatives for Water Commission and City Council to consider during this rate study. Erin mentioned that I give you an idea of the timeline for this study. The slide I'm showing now is a rate study timeline that shows approximate dates and or months for different steps in the rate study process. From this schedule, you can see that there are many more ways to stay involved over the next few months. There's the schedule shows that we are meeting regularly with the Water Commission and with City Council. So each step of the way, we provide them information about where we are in the study. And then you can see that there are public meetings that you can attend or watch online to stay informed. Our team will offer a little bit more detail about those future opportunities. Now I'll turn this presentation and the discussion over to the rest of our team. At the end of the presentation, we welcome any questions you may have. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Carol and, and Aaron. It's many times difficult to take a complex issue like a rate study and give it terminology that's easily digested and understood. And you both did a nice job with that. So thank you for that. Uh, for everyone on the call and, and attending as stakeholders or those of you in the community that may be listening uh, by telephone, uh, we want to encourage you to stay involved and stay engaged. And many of your questions uh, can be answered most easily uh, by a dedicated website that has been created specifically for this purpose. And so you see on your screen here, if you want to maybe take a picture of the screen or something to kind of record that, uh, please do. But it's a really simple website address to remember, cleanwaterflagstaff.com. Again, cleanwaterflagstaff.com. There on that website, you'll find all the information you need, including upcoming hearings and dates, a project timeline and schedule, as well as some resource videos and information that will help you understand a little bit more, not just about the study, but about water use in general. So, you know, please, by all means, go to that website. And if during the course of the study, you have any questions with regard to it, you can on that website, click on the contact us button, and that will take you to a page where you can pose a question. Uh, you can make a comment, you can provide feedback. That will go directly to city staff who then will review and respond to you in kind. So again, 
we really encourage you, particularly if you're involved in homeowners associations or business associations, to please distribute the cleanwaterflagstaff.com website name out to folks because it is an available and ready resource that was established strictly for the purpose of improving and increasing communication throughout the stakeholder community. Also, if you need to contact Erin directly, she has bravely provided her email address, which is easily found on the, the city's website, uh, eyoung at flagstaffaz.gov, uh, as well as her phone number here, her office number. So if you have a reason to reach out to her directly, you know, she's welcoming those calls and that contact as well. Uh, but again, we would encourage everyone to take a look at cleanwaterflagstaff.com and see how it can maybe help address any questions you may have or give you a platform uh, to provide comments or questions as well. Uh, we then would like to, this evening, we do have an opportunity. We've got Aaron and Carol uh, available to address any questions you may have. Um, and so once again, I'd like to encourage you to put those questions into the Q&A box. The way to do that is if you're on the WebEx uh, attending this virtually, simply click on the Q&A icon. That'll pop open a box or Q&A panel. And at the bottom, you'll see an area to enter a question. Just click in the box, type in your question, hit send, and it will come through to us and we'll be happy to address any and all questions we receive uh, this evening. If again, you're participating by telephone, if you press zero, it'll take you to a live operator. That operator will take your question and put it into uh, the, the conversation. While folks are thinking about it, maybe you know, wondering what you know, questions they may have, I've got a couple of questions that I experience time and time again, many times as we do these rate studies, because let's face it, we, we all have uh, issues, concerns, hopes, whatnot. When we start talking about rates, it's normal uh, to do that. And so uh, my first question is uh, for Carol. Um, Carol, um, you used a word that's really kind of unique to rate studies, and you were talking, Carol, about you know recovering costs, which is really unique because I think sometimes folks don't fully understand how their their the money they pay on their water bill can or is used versus, for example, property taxes. So when you're using recovery, that to me always means we're dealing with something like an enterprise fund. So, you know, would you help explain to folks when they pay their water bill how that money can and more importantly cannot be used by the city? Thank you, Tim. That's an excellent question. And it is part of the work that we do is to make sure that the water and wastewater and reclaimed water funds maintain an enterprise fund status. So that means that they have their revenues that are collected from rates and fees can only be used for those charges or those costs that are incurred in those funds. So there is that the city does provide services to those funds, things like financial services, um, human resources, and other sorts of services that get charged to these funds, but that's pretty much the only thing that the, the funds through rates pay for those services directly. So it's a, it's a balance of those costs that are incurred just for provision of water, wastewater, and reclaimed water service from the rates paid for those services. I agree. I think that's important to understand, Carol, is that those rates can only be used. They're limited in how they can be used. So when you pay your water bill, it goes for the cost of water services. And the same is true of wastewater and reclaimed. And while I've got you, um, again, uh, actually, I was, I'm going to switch over to Aaron. Aaron, I have a question for you on conservation. You know, when you look at the way that the rate structure is, uh, it really encourages conservation. It says if you're a, a single family and you conserve water and you stay below 3,500 gallons, you're going to pay a lower rate. And that type of graduated or tiered system uh, really advocates conservation. But I also know the city's doing a lot more out there for conservation because everything you can conserve increases capacity and lowers costs. Do you want to share with folks a little about some of the conservation goals and practices that the city has undertaken? Sure, Tim, you bet. Yeah, our conservation program, we have a, we have a very strong uh, water conservation program. That tiered rate structure on residential uh, was implemented in, I think, like 1990 uh, to drive water conservation. And we have dropped um, on a per capita water use uh, metric, we've dropped by over 50% since 1990. Uh, so just that tiered rate alone uh, has made a huge impact on how much uh, water we're using in, in, in Flagstaff. Um, we're actually producing the same uh, volume of water every year. Um, 
that we were in in 1990. So basically, as the as the population has grown, uh, we're not producing much, you know, more water from our water wells and stuff. So it it saves everyone money um, to conserve. Our conservation program. Am I going on a little too long, Tim? No, no, you're, you're fine. I thought you were tapering there, so I came on, but please go oh. ahead and continue. Well, our, our water conservation program was uh, really took off in 2003 after we had a significant drought. Um, and uh, we had trouble communicating with our community when we were in this drought. We had to have people curtail their water use because we weren't able to produce water from Upper Lake Mary. So, you know, we didn't have that communication with our community or that connection on, hey, we have odd even watering days. Um, we need you to curtail you. So now our water conservation program, we are out in the community at a lot of community events. We offer a lot of different rebates. If you want to swap out an old toilet, we'll give you a hundred bucks. Um, we have uh, commercial and residential programs. Um, you can reach out to me for more information. You can just Google uh, City Flagstaff Water Conservation and you'll find our website that has great information on it, of course. So great, Erin. Thank you. And and I'm gonna keep you on for just a second because you know when we talk about water conservation, obviously the city is doing a great job, the residents and businesses are doing a great job. And well, gee whiz, if we're not using any more water overall, the cost should stay the same, right? But that's not really the entire equation, is it? It isn't. Um, there's a lot of other costs out there, and I'm going to bring this one. I'm going to bring Carol up because Carol and, and uh, her folks and I were talking about this uh, in a previous presentation of city council. We have seen some really, I think, in the course of our history. And Carol, you mentioned you've been at this 20 plus years. I've been in the industry for 30 plus years. In the last couple of years, we have seen some some price increases in materials that utilities use, such as water departments for pipe and whatnot at higher levels than we've ever seen before. Would, would you kind of expand on that for folks just a little bit? Sure, that's true, Tim. We keep track of what we call the producer price indices or the, even the consumer price index you've probably heard a lot of about. But we look at products such as chemicals, pipes, um, electricity, any of those types of inputs to utility management and utility services that have grown, gone up since 2020, like a, a lot, more than 30% for chemicals, more than 25% in those few years for electricity. And you've probably seen that in your own homes. But these increases in costs are often managed by the utility in through contracts with those providers. But, you know, those contracts get renewed and revised and the costs and are increasing. It also affects the supply for the supply chain for inputs to building up, um, building a treatment plant or a pump or something like that. Those that equipment or materials, um, concrete, steel, all of those inputs have gone up. What has happened is with the capital planning that may have occurred a few years ago for large capital improvement projects, the the bids that are getting re that are being received to do the work have been higher than what was originally planned for or anticipated. That's, um, you know, that's something that the city has been managing really well, but that's a, a reality for many utilities across the United States. Well, thanks, Carol. We've seen the same thing as we work with clients. They may have budgeted five years ago for a project and they cost it out at, a, at that time. And a few years later, we're seeing those projects 20, 30, 50% higher to where they're having to, to change the way they do business. And Aaron, uh, Carol's presentation mentioned something that I think is, is worth coming back to. And it is that, you know, the utility really hasn't done a rate study uh, in about seven years. And but so during the course of that time, they've held rates the same. And so I think for me at my household budget, you know, the price of eggs went up. I wasn't able just to go in the grocery store and say, hey, last week the price was X. That's all I want to pay. But in essence, the utility, and I'll say this because we review utilities all over the country. We see this has done a phenomenal job of, of continuing and keeping things operating. 
but eventually that catches up with you. And so in this rate study, it's possible we might see some of those things that have kind of been delayed or deferred really coming home to roost and having to work on them. Would you say that that's something that, that may have to be tackled in the very near future? Yeah, Tim, I, you know, you, you mentioned uh, our, our previous rate study. We did have an increase starting in 2016 for five years, um, 2015, I, I apologize on water. And we haven't had an increase since 2020. Um, so that, you know, that has hurt us. So as um, the costs for a lot of our capital projects have have gone up uh, because of the, the change, changes in the industry Carol mentioned, you know, it eats into the budget for everything else. And um, yeah, this is a, a very important in, uh, st study and potential increase for us so we can catch up. Um, what suffers has been uh, kind of our aging infrastructure. We're not replacing the, the miles of pipeline that has been identified in our master planning efforts. Um, we're tackling, you know, the um, the fires and not uh, preventative maintenance like we want to be. I hope that addressed your your point, the point you wanted to make, Tim. It has, and we do have a question, um, and I uh, from Paul, and I'd, I'd like to maybe keep. Uh, I'm not sure, Carol or Aaron, which of you is best for this. So I'm going to ask you both to kind of come on for this, but it really goes to what we were talking about a little bit earlier, Carol, about enterprise funds, and so. Uh, so, question, and this is, uh, I guess I'm going to direct it to Aaron and ask Carol to back up and support as necessary. But Aaron, you know, you've got your utility fund over here, and all the rates go into that fund. And then you've got your general fund over here, which is a separate bucket. And so the question is, how often or does money ever move from an enterprise fund over into the general fund? Does that, act, does that happen uh, in any routine nature? You know what? I am the water resources manager. I want to say in general, no, but there are probably some exceptions. And I, I noticed Lisa Deem has turned her camera on. I'm going to let her address that question and or our director. Okay, Shannon. Um, and again, uh, thank you for coming on. Shannon wasn't one of our presenters, but Shannon, you want to introduce yourself real quickly to folks? Uh, yes, thank you, Tim. <clears throat> no, I think that's a great question. I think to Aaron's point, um, typically the revenues that come into the utility fund the operation of the utility. Uh, with that being said, with the question being, does money ever flow from the enterprise fund to the general fund? The short answer would be yes. The main reason is because there's support services that are provided by the general fund, such as human resources, uh, financial procurement, purchase orders, um, legal, um, so there's services that are provided to the utility from other departments within the city and the utility reimburses those other divisions back. But really that is the extent of which really funds move from the utility into the general fund is for the, to cover those costs of service. Yeah, and thank you. It makes a lot of sense. It's resource sharing. It wouldn't make sense for the utility to have its own human resources department when the city has one that it can share in those resource costs. But Basically, um, because it is an enterprise fund, it's probably easier to track how much of that money, if someone wanted to look at the budget, actually does move in that direction. Is that something that would be pretty easy for someone to find out? Uh, yes, it is, and it's in uh, the financial reporting for the city, so they can definitely reach out to us. Uh, we can point them in the direction, but the city's financial reports are available on the website, very transparent, and what you will see in there are the transfers to for other city services. Super. Thank you very much, Shannon. And thank you for that question, Paul. Um, also would like to encourage folks, in addition to being able to post questions on the virtual platform tonight, again, that, um, that website, cleanwaterflagstaff.com. At any point, if you have a question related to the utility, it doesn't just have to be about the rate study. If you'd like to go to that website uh, and put those questions in there, uh, we'll do our best to get those answered to you. Um, what we're seeing is we're not seeing uh, any more questions come in. I tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring um, Carol back on one more time to talk a little bit about the timing. We shared a schedule with you, um, but what are you know what's kind of the next milestone? If I'm listening to this presentation, I want to know what's the next kind of big item that's going to roll out or item to be discussed by the Water Commission uh, or the City Council. What's the timing on that next that next uh, topic? 
Thanks, Tim. The timing that we're planning right now is for January, mid to late January, to present information on those capacity fees that I mentioned. So the one-time charges to new connections and the miscellaneous fees. So other services that the city provides. So that would be the next uh, information that the Water Commission and City Council would receive. So that's our, our next step. Rate designs follow in February and March and April. Um, we intend. To oh, looks like Carol, we froze up and lost your audio there. Uh, Aaron, you want to come on real quick and um, uh, pick up with that? So we're, we're looking at that coming up in January, February. We're first will be presented to the Water Commission and then, then the City Council. Is, is that correct? Um, most often we, we okay. run things past the water commissioners and get their take before we, we bring, uh, something to city council. So in general, you know, um, the water commission will see kind of rate design ideas. They'll vet them and then we'll bring our very best ideas to city council. Um, that'll continue in January with rate design. Um, and then February with kind of results, um, March will really be, um, you know, starting to get direction from city council on what kind of options they're looking at. Um, and then, uh, hopefully in, in kind of May and June, we are, uh, at the final point in the process where city council, we have the public hearings for rate adjustments. We're still getting some input from the public. Um, and they should be making that final decision in late June or July before they go on uh, their break with rates effective um, rate changes September 1st. Great. Thank you, Aaron. And you mentioned something that I think is important is we're, we're never not taking input from the public. And that's precisely why we set up the website, uh, which is, you know, at any time you can pose questions or ask questions or provide input. And it'll become a part of the rate study. Actually, we will track and maintain all those. Um, and uh, I do, Paul. I see Paul has another question about the amount of funds being transferred in a percentage amount. I don't think, Paul, that with this panel, we're going to be ready to answer that question tonight. It's not something that uh, that we can just kind of pull out of thin air. However, it is available in the budget, and so one of two things. You're welcome to take a look at the city website and look at the budget, or if you'd like to take that question, maybe funnel it over through the website. Maybe we can have somebody get back to you on that, Paul. So um, I appreciate the question, but just not something that's kind of in the wheelhouse of information for tonight, uh, but it's something that certainly is readily available and can be provided. Um, so with that, and I know Shannon's probably taking note of that right now, uh, but if you would please take the time to pose that question um, through, uh, through our website, cleanwaterflagstaff.com, we'll work on getting you an answer. Uh, we don't have any other questions coming in at this point, but again, I, I want to uh, emphasize two things. Number one, this is a two way communication. The study is a transparent process that allows everyone to see how the rates are assessed, uh, what goes into them exactly. And there are no fewer than two monthly presentations, both Water Commission and City Council, that are publicly available. We also will be coming back to the public with a stakeholder meeting again at some point. It might be an in person meeting, it may be virtual. That hasn't been determined yet. We'll be seeking direction uh, from the, the City Council, from the utility on how best to accomplish that. Uh, and we look forward to getting back with you again sometime in the near future. Um, so, again, I'm going to drive everyone to that website, cleanwaterflagstaff.com. We hope you'll go there, pick up as much information as you can. And if you have questions, kind of like what Paul had tonight that we can't really answer on the fly here this evening, please pose those and we'll do our best to get back to you with them. Uh, Aaron or Carol, did you have any closing comments before we round out this evening? I do not, and I apologize. I got dropped from the call earlier. The technology gremlins are still out there, no matter how much better we get at it. That's that's true. But you're back, Carol. That's what's important. Erin, any closing thoughts or comments for this evening? Tim, I do not have any closing costs or, com or comments, but or thoughts or comments. But I just want to uh, thank everyone who did join us tonight. And um, this was a, a great meeting. Thank you. And thank you, Carol, for your time. Thank you all. All right, with that, we're gonna to conclude tonight's meeting. I wanna again, thank all of the stakeholder attendees for participating. Uh, please share the website information to anyone who has any questions. And with that, we wish everyone a fantastic evening, a better weekend coming up. 
uh, and have a good evening. Thank you again.